if we donate electronics, we don't necessarily want to donate all of our data as well, right? And I've got a specific example with that. I uh, recently bought uh, a uh, media player. So it's an Android-based device. Um, I bought it refurbished for, through some online place, whatever. Uh, and it, when it came in, it had pictures of the previous device owner's dog. And if I brought up EXIF information, it probably showed me where the person lived as well, because it would have GPS information on it. Uh, even though it's not a phone, it's just a media player, but it's a media player that does have networking. Um, so, uh, you know, if I were get, sending that back to the company or if I were donating it, I wouldn't want my address information in there. Probably don't want that pictures of my dog either, but I'm obviously in this particular case more concerned about the, the address. Um, but when I got my, uh, my most recent phone, the very f first things I did were take pictures of my family, and I would not want those going to the next person. If I need to send a phone back for, because there's a problem with it, again, I don't want that information going to somebody else. Uh, I know the NSA is making copies of everything for me, but I don't need it to go everywhere else. Um, and at least at the NSA, after 10 or 15 years, through Freedom of Information Acts, uh, request, I can get my data back. If it goes to Dell or HP, they have it, but they're probably not going to give it back to me. So, uh, and I'm not speaking on Dell or HP, just the names I came up with off the top of my head. So, so uh, printers, I went and looked, and from what I can see, uh, inkjets are probably, if you, if you pull the power and let them sit for a couple minutes, they're probably devoid of data from your print jobs. Right? So um, now if you've got a print queue and you plug it back in, the data will go back in from your print queue on your computer. Um, but if you're planning on donating it, if you unplug it, um, unless the, you're the flash, by the time you've donated it, it will have been off power for a couple minutes. Don't put it, hook it up to a UPS in the car and make sure it's powered when you get there. Um, that'll be gone. But your configuration, for instance, information about your home network, uh, anything else that you might put on there, uh, could still be in there. So you'll need to do a hard or cold reset in order to delete that. Now, that was for the inkjets. If you're using lasers, lasers generally will have more information and you'll need to go find how to delete the information, securely delete the information from that particular di device. So you'll have to research how to do that. Um, that's the other thing though, is if you have a particular printer you're not certain about, go ask a search engine, put in the print device, white memory, and see what you get back as, re as the procedure for that particular device. Um, and then I know from, uh, for the high-end devices, so from a corporate perspective, uh, they do have information. Um, so for instance, if you uh, don't have a printer at home and you print out all of your stuff at work, don't think about, oh, as long as I get it out of there, nobody knows I did anything. That information is still on the, on the spool in the printer, and usually there is zero security on there, so people can wander the spool and look at things uh, to see what's going on there. Um, and in fact, if I remember correctly, the one we had at a particular company that might have kind of been mentioned earlier tonight, um, you could get the data off of it by doing an SNMP walk. So even if you weren't trying to get the data, the data out of the spool, you would get the data out of the spool. Yep, so I was going to bring up the all-in-ones, which covers, which brings up the copier, the fax, the OCR type of stuff. So copy, things that do copies generally have an internal cache to keep track of what they're, what they're um, scanning. So a copier scanner will have that. A fax machine is not only copying the data, but they're also tracking the phone number that was called, the connection, and that is usually cached for a while and I believe that's cached between boots. So just powering off won't go through and wipe that. Again, at this particular company, when I was having to go through uh, some stuff on our printer there, I had a whole bunch of fax information, including coworkers faxing off different things for house offers and taxes and things like that that they probably didn't want everybody else in the company to see. Um, and if you've got like HR, where they're faxing off personal information or whatever, uh, so if, if they've had a request for uh, you know job referral or whatever else, or they're they're sending off here's the here's the uh, the the evidence to be used against this former employee as of five minutes ago, um, you know again that might be open for everybody else to see, so you don't want that to happen. So one thing is if you're setting up a corp setting up uh, 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 environment for a corporation, 
and your HR department needs copying and faxing and things like that, they should have their own device that basically only they can get to. Um, uh, because it could have personnel information on it, and it should not be available from the normal network for everybody else to go through and browse. Uh, so hard drives. Um, we can use the sledgehammer mechanism, um, but unless you really damage the disks, they're still readable. It is fun, I will say, uh, to take a sledgehammer after a hard drive. It is, that is a blast. Um, but it is not effective at wiping the disk. Um, you can do the whole pour cement in there, but again, it's not wiping the disk. So what are the things you need to do wipe the disk? You can open it up and scrape all the, the metal off the disk, and then, then you've got nothing. Um, but if you wanted to donate it so that it's functional, anymore the U.S. government um, requires that hard drives be shredded or melted down or something like that. So when they, when they give away, the federal government gives away a computer, they pull the hard drive out. It doesn't matter what that computer was used for. They pull the, the, the hard drive out, and they get rid of it. Part of it might be because they work with the NSA who shows them you can get data off the hard drive under extreme circumstances. So there are tools like Wipe and, and one I just ran into, NWipe, uh, that will go through and, and do the multiple passes type of thing. It does take a while. You, you t- hit it and walk away for a couple of weeks and come back. Um, so it can take, take a while as, yeah, as drives get bigger. There's some other tools. I found a package called Secure Delete that covers some other things we'll get into as well. Um, one thing, if you're donating, I'll get to you in a second, Ed. If you're donating the computer to be used, so if you're donating it to, to a place that will go through and use it for something else, you can destroying the hard drive makes the, the donation less useful. So you can do your secure wipes, but one thing to make sure you do, even if you're not doing your secure wipes, is do a new OS install. Next thing uh, is also uh, uh, um, ephemeral or, or flash or whatever. Uh, that many of us wouldn't think about, or at least I, I think we might not think about, and usually doesn't matter. But for those of you that are really paranoid, I mean, what's the point of being really paranoid without going full, bear, full bore? Um, so if you're worried about your memory, the computer memory, not, not this up here, that one you have to handle on your own. So your, your memory uh, on a system, and this is more really for debugging than for, for actually wiping it, but this, the debugging will go wipe it. So uh, Memtest 86 Plus, We'll go through and write a whole bunch of different patterns to your memory. Um, this is great for debugging if you're having problems with the computer. Memtest 86 Plus will actually go through and basically test your, the computer memory and the CPU for errors. And it does it by writing different patterns and different things like that and looking for, for getting back the data it's expecting to get back. Um, but it also has a lot of information about why it's doing the different things it's doing. Um, so that's the main reason I put it in here. Again, if you want further details about different patterns you can do and what the, the what things are people wanting to do. That's a good tool. I haven't read the full documentation on it or wipe in a long time, you know, at least five or six years. So I don't know if it's been updated to take into account SSDs and flash devices and so forth. Um, but uh, the wipe guys were fairly, um, you know, uh, full disclosure about what they were doing. So I would think that that would have up-to-date information or fairly up-to-date information. Uh, and of course, the other thing you can do is look at what people have, have ex- disclosed as exploits during the last couple of DEF CONs. Most distributions nowadays, if you go through and install that package, it will set up a boot parameter for that. So if you think you're having problems with the system, you can just reboot and choose the Memtest 86 Plus uh, option when you boot. So it'll automatically go into it and let it run overnight. If you're going to run that, don't think, hey, I'll run it for five minutes and see where we're at. Just let it run overnight and see if you get any errors. Home routers and home SAN, so, so network attached storage. Um, and for those, uh, you can go through, and, and many of them nowadays, for, for, for our group, we should be buying things that we can put our own version of, uh, of a Linux distro on them anyway. Um, but they'll be, they'll be tracking logs and you know what what type of stuff your uh, people are are looking at, including web searches, URLs, IP addresses, and other things that you again might not want to have available. If that's also your internal switch for your internal network, it's tracking data that's going back and forth between your internal computers. Uh, again, you might not want to have that information there, especially if you are unlike me and don't just put everything over SSH. So at least my router can only see my SSH sessions for the most part. Uh, I am using a few 
uh, well, we've got our phones now, and I don't have I don't have full control over those network stuff. So those are doing non-SSH stuff, but my computers at least are all SSH. So your home routers, uh, if your home router is also a print server, you have print information that is caching. Uh, if it's also a file server, you have file information that's caching. Um, so you'll need to look at what you can do to, to wipe those properly. Uh, if you have just network attached storage, um, you not, might not be able to run wipe on it because it might not have it. Uh, so you might have to take it apart and pull the drive out. Um, hopefully at this point they would all have um, secure mechanisms. Now if you're using FreeNAS or one of the other BSD systems, you can probably encrypt the drives before you start adding data. So you've, you've got the encryption to begin with at least. Um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for somebody to, to pull, pull your data off of that. Um, and then uh, something that we got in the direction of, but I don't think we quite really covered, children's toys. So how many things do my kid, does my kid run around with that are actually collecting data on him? In fact, more and more every day, right? But they have a lot of information about uh, the ch kids, especially the things that are interactive toys, like tell me your name and other things like that. They're recording information going on in the children's uh, environment. Uh, there's at least one CSI episode where they got the murder because the child's toy recorded the murder or some crap like that. So let's go ahead and go to, we've, we've, we've jumped around Android devices a few times. So we have phones, media players, watches, Google Glass, you know, Android cars coming up sometime soon or whatever. I think we can count Android devices as a single entity for the most part. Um, so it's, it's Android or iPhone as being the things you need to work about or other phones. Um, the, the, the hardware portion of it will be the same challenge as we were talking about for other things. If it's, if it's your, your uh, um, uh, GPS on your car, we don't have access to get in and go and, and use wipe on the, on the device. Um, so if it's an Android device, you can do a hard reset, which will theoretically wipe out your personal data, um, but it doesn't quite wipe out your personal data, uh, especially since it might still be, if somebody takes the hardware apart, be able to pull old data off the, off the device. Um, you can go through and do a new install, but again, if you only install, the brand new install doesn't use much of the device, that leaves a whole lot of drive that hasn't been wiped, written over. So if you, if you wipe it and put something else on there, um, there, I'm certain there are applications that will go through and, and wipe a good portion of your system for you, uh, some of them inadvertently. Um, but uh, again, if you're using CyanogenMod, um, you have a little bit more access for what's going on under the hood, a little bit more control on what's, what's going on. And of course, by doing your own install, there are some things you can do um, at the disk level during the install. If you, uh, if you get a phone that has external SD card or micro SD, you can try to keep most of your personal data on that. So at least you can, chain, you know, can pull the SD card out so it doesn't have to go with the phone. Um, and also for phones, as far as data that's on there, so you've got your pictures that you've taken, again, of, of things. Picture, remember, if you're posting stuff up line, XF data nowadays has GPS, so now every time you post a picture, you're also posting where it was taken. Uh, your uh, GPS data is on the phone for where you've been. Um, the cell phone towers are tracking where you've been, and that's being collected elsewhere. Um, uh, I thought of something. Oh, all of your uh, SMS messages, pages you've gotten. Uh, if you're using your phone to, to access email, um, so my phone can only access my work mail because they require me to. So as, as our phones can do more, there's more data that they can track about us as well. Uh, and also, keep an eye on what applications you're installing because they can be just uploading that data to wherever that they want for you. For instance, something that came up in the Android Marketplace recently uh, is that uh, there was a flashlight app that was just gathering all kinds of information off your phone and sending it off to China. Because, of course, we need flashlights to go through and search everything on our phone and send it off to China. Um, so, uh, and unfortunately, one thing with Google they've done recently is they've now hidden some of the permissions. You have to go down and look at the bottom to see what they're doing because they just presume that every app you have will have network access, which I think is a really, really bad presumption. That's their business model. I'll get to you in a second, Don. That's their business model, so I understand why from a business perspective why they're doing it. But I have a lot of apps on my phone and especially on my child's device that do not have network access. Um, one thing I do on my, on my child's tablet is I go through on a regular basis to make sure Wi-Fi is still turned off, and I often have to turn it back off again, so something's turning it back on. Um, 
so that even if they are collecting data, they can't be sending it up anywhere or they can't do it very often. So cameras, you've got your removable media, but your camera might also have internal memory where it's caching things uh, in two different ways. So a camera I have uh, is, is awesome. It takes pictures in the past. So when I start taking pictures, I can hold the, the shutter down halfway, and it starts streaming pictures, and mine will do 1,000 frames a second, plus it'll do video. And then when I click it down all the way, it basically kicks back to a half second ago and throws that to disk. So that whole missed it stops. I, I still jerk the camera, so that part happens. But you know, as that whole missed it gets taken care of because you can take the picture, your reaction time, allows it to get what it had before. But that means that internal cache has data. Now theoretically that gets tossed out, at, you know, it gets overwritten. But you can also have the new video camera I have has um, you know, 32 gigs of internal memory that can record to if my SD card is full. Um, and defaults to that if the SD card is out of there. Um, so that also is, is memory that can be in there. Again, unless you're taking the device apart to get to that memory, we don't have a real way to, to go through and clear it. it uh, the camera does have a mechanism for reformatting uh, the, the device, uh, the, the memory device. So you can use that, but how, you know, how good that'll be, I don't know. Um, so uh, if you're really wanting to make sure it's that secure, use your USB cable to a laptop with an encrypted drive and, and record to that instead of to uh, any of the internal devices. So 3D and broadband cards, I killed. I don't know what you do. <laughs> I have no idea what you do about that. Um, some some of those cards you can put firmware on, so you can change out the firmware that's on it. But that's not where the cache is going to be. That's probably going to be a different memory device, or at least a different memory location, and won't be accessible from the firmware stuff. So um, yeah, those I don't know what you can do. Uh, one nice thing about those, for as far as most of us go is that uh, a lot of people in this group, we use hardware kind of beyond its life cycle. So there isn't really a place to donate it to anyway. <laughs> so the, the kiln might be the, the direction to go for that. Uh, and for those of you that don't have ready access to a kiln, you know, come up with a really good bonfire or something like that. So uh, video game consoles. We're, we're, okay, first of all, if you, if you buy stuff from a certain company in Redmond, it's watching you, right? In, in, in Soviet Russia, you watch video games. In, in America, video games watch you, right? <laughs> so it's gathering a lot of information. They're, they're talking about being able to do uh, recognition for who's playing the game and who's in the room. So that means that they're watching the room all the time. So we're buying Big Brother and sending data up to their cloud. You know, hey, let's make it easy for you, and I will finance it. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good thing to me. Um, but even uh, without that, uh, interactive games are, are still gathering information. Uh, it might be just when you're awake, when you're not awake, because you know, you're playing games at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Um, but they're also gathering information about different people in the house. Uh, I have a Wii, uh, and I use the sport thing, so it's gathering information about me, how, how much I weigh, and, and so forth, and whether or not I can, I can move rhythmically for certain of the games. Um, but it's also gathering information about my kid, because my kid plays it as well. Um, and if I was using the, uh, the Xbox with the, the We Will Scan You device, then it's not only gathering information, but it's actually, as I say, looking at us. Um, but uh, for other game consoles, which are not uh, that interactive, just playing... Uh, um, whatever uh, Doom or whatever games that are out there nowadays, I have no idea, or the games that are on your phone, um, are, is there, do we, do you concern, are you concerned with it? I mean, if a new game comes out, as I understand from gamers, that when the new game comes out, that game can collect a lot of data about the person for the first week as they don't move other than playing the game. <laughs> so it's getting reaction speed, how well they do under with no sleep. Um, so you know, it's finding out whether or not they're a good candidate for the Marines, right? Uh, you can use SD cards for those, for a lot of those, or external USB devices. So you can at least be storing a bunch of the data on an external device. The NFC ring uh, that, that we got that has an NFC chip on the back side of it for near field communication. Um, in the new version of Android Lollipop, they will have 
the software necessary to use that for for Android for being able to unlock. So now instead of having to have a super secret code, just this ring can be used. This is the phone I was looking for type of thing. You can also use it for other things. So one, nowadays, you can use different patterns. So one pattern is for let me use the phone. Another pattern is open the camera. The other pattern is set off the air raid alarm because the, the NSA has me. Um, things like that, right? Um, but the, uh, with the NFC ring, then you might be able to do the same things. But it can also hold uh, uh, an ID, so a, a GPG key, and others got, uh, was it 4K of data, I think it's available, that's writable. So that information can be on there as well. Um, and uh, they were working on it, but they couldn't get it working where you could actually have two different memory locations on the ring. Uh, so those of you with larger fingers, that might work better than those of us. But. So alarms, security systems. Uh, so if you get a security system, well, I, I'll count that as a DVR because it's the same type of thing. So DVR is recording your, your DVR, digital visual recorder. Mostly we think of as recording TV stuff, what you're watching and so forth. But you could also be uploading pictures in, in your own movies and so forth. Um, but you can also hook up security systems to that, so they're using it. Uh, security systems are the cameras are caching, the, the DVR back end is, is recording, uh, oftentimes the cameras are wireless, so you can, your Wi-Fi is there. And for whatever reason, they don't think that that encrypting them is important. Um, or uh, what was the other thing? Was that they 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 were uh, susceptible to shell shock, right? So they could be accessed remotely and broken into remotely because it's an extra feature. If it's DVR, you might be able to open it up and pull out the hard drives and then stick them in a computer and do hard drive things with them. Uh, the DVR itself probably at best has a wipe function that probably isn't very good, a reset function that probably isn't very good. For the cameras, uh, again, it's going to have flash memory in there for the ca- for caching probably. Um, the best thing you can do with that probably is get a, you know, like a one meter cube uh, that's that's hollow and, and throw uh, with, with a decent light source on it and throw the camera powered on and a cat into the cube and leave them for 30 minutes. Um, so you're not getting just the same thing, you know, because again, you want to record over the whole thing. Um, smart TVs, uh, they're just gathering data, and you know, and, and about your watching habits and what you've got on there. If you've used them to upload your pictures, they've got copies of that on their systems as well. Um, and the fun thing about that, like I have a, a photo frame that just stopped working, so now it has my data on there, and I don't, you know, aside from fixing the hardware, I don't have a way of deleting it. Uh, which is another thing with the small electronics. If they stop working altogether, now your data is on there, and you don't have a way of deleting it aside from the kiln. So, so cars. Uh, so we talked about um, uh, you've got the the entertainment system, which could have information on it. You've got the GPS GPS system that is possibly be, being recorded both at the entertainment system and the internal car. Uh, new cars have like 13 CPUs on them with lots of different memory c- gathering information, um, including uh, for the for the insurance companies how fast you're driving and how hard you hit your brakes and and, uh, and you know how often you swerve and things like that. What? The the other thing is the new, newer models. Uh, I have I believe this went through, but newer models will have to have the black box, which is gathering information and keeping it in a semi crash proof uh, environment. Um, Again, on those, I think it's really only like 30 minutes with the data that's supposed to be on those. Doesn't mean that's 30 minutes a day that's required to be on there. Doesn't mean that they're not gathering longer amounts of data or specific pieces of information for a longer period of time. Um, so, as far as wiping those, as I understand it, it's probably a federal fel- a felony to wipe those. So, your best bet is to uh, let your neighbor borrow it for, for half a week and then blame any runs to the border and back real quick on him. All right. Streaming devices will hit with the same thing as the TVs and the DVRs. GPS, if you have an external GPS device, um, dust it off. It's been there for a while. Oh, um, if you have an external DV, uh, GPS device, again, it's gathering information about where you've been. Um, some of the, uh, many of the new ones have, we know they have Linux on them because Microsoft sued them for having for supporting FAT, Um, but I don't know that we necessarily have access under the hood to go through and wipe the data that's on them. So Internet of Everything, so microwaves, uh, TVs, we covered already, Uh, refrigerators. You get get the refrigerator, 
We've, they've been advertising it for years. At this point, you can buy the $7,000 refrigerator with a barcode, everything as it goes in and out, and let you know when you need to do things. If you're working with the, the proper, we will take all of your money uh, 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 grocery stores, they will, the refrigerator will automatically make orders for you so that food shows up. So if you're out of milk, it will automatically notify the cow to make more milk that sh- gets shipped to you. So you're getting fresh and, and, and whatever. Um, that, that data, that functionality is already in there that you can pay extra, like thousands extra, to have your refrigerator re- re- you know, letting you know. So the fridge is still doing it. Be reporting data up there. Our microwaves are getting pretty close to being able to do that on a regular basis. Our nests, so our what, our uh, electrical stuff, and that's being used for the smart grid. So the the electrical, co- you know, the uh, electric companies can figure out when they need more power, when they le- need less power, and they can be telling your devices when they should run. Um, so that th- you could be like, if you're if you're doing washing your dishes at noon. They could say, hey, wait a minute, it's noon in the summer, everybody's got their AC running, turn the dishwasher off so that we can and run that at night when, when, we, when power is not as expensive. And then you have dirty dishes when your guests arrive. And, and you're embarrassed because Martha Stewart showed up and you, well, you should be embarrassed anyway. Um, so it, it can be set, sending directives back up to your devices and telling them when you're allowed to, wa- to dry your hair or not or whatever else. Um, and I don't know, you know, they, they never talk about you can override this at the local environment so that they can't do that. But we have a lot of devices in our home that are electronic, our alarm clocks, our, you know, uh, um, other things that we, you know, what the hell is electric? Actually, light bulbs, right? You have the light bulbs now that will have um, uh, MP3 players and, and do music. They will also send up stuff. If, if you've hooked up the proper microphone to your LED, it'll also record what's going on in the room for you. Um, uh, so other things, if you've got you know a fancy popcorn machine, maybe that'll send things back up for you. Um, so one of the things with that is if they're if they're not Wi-Fi, if they have to physically connect to your network, you can filter those at your firewall and just don't allow them to send stuff upstream. But if they're Wi-Fi or if they're um, if they're Z-Wave, they can be connecting up to a Z-Wave relay and, and that can be sending all the data back up there. So you need to, to make sure those are okay. But if it's Wi-Fi and you've got a neighbor that runs open Wi-Fi, they just have a network connection. And, you know, I don't know, maybe you can add tinfoil the right place to dock out the antenna of the smart device. Let's go ahead and wrap up with that.